Hey there, welcome back. In case we haven't met yet, my name is B, and I love to code the heck out of Squarespace and teach other designers how to do it too. Today, I'm going to be addressing a question that I got regarding the related items section inside product pages in Squarespace. Now, this person wanted to know a couple of ways to customize the different parts of that section because there are not a lot of native options available to be able to do so, especially in 7.1. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how you can do a couple of things. The first one is going to be how you can set up a different number of columns for that related products item section inside Squarespace 7.1. In 7.0, you can do it through the site styles, but in 7.1, you can't. So I'm going to show you how you can do it with a little bit of CSS. And the next thing that we're going to tackle in this video is how we can style the font of both the title of those related item products and also their prices. So if this is something that you've been meaning to tweak or something that you'd like to know how to tweak in the future, make sure to keep on watching to learn how to make it happen. Alrighty, so here I am in a 7.1 Squarespace site and I'm looking at the related products section inside a product page. Now, just in case you don't know where to enable this, you can go ahead and click on edit product on any of the products that you have that you want to have that section turned on for. And then if you go all the way down here, you're going to see that there's a related products section here. So if you'll click here, you're going to be able to select the category that you want to use to be able to display those um, related products at the end of your product page. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And again, this is pretty much what it looks like. Now, the thing is that in 7.1 in particular, because it's not the same for 7.0, but in 7.1, the problem is that the grid that gets created in here is linked to the grid that you have on the main product page. So you're going to see that if I go here to my main store page, I have this set as a two thumbnail per row kind of thing. And then if I were to modify this in here, then I click here where it says edit section. And then I add, let's say three columns and then I save this. If I go back into my product and then look at that related product section, you're going to see how the grid here changes as well. So the problem is that because one thing is linked with the other, you basically need to compromise depending on which section you want to look better. So I'm going to show you a quick trick that you can use to be able to change the layout for this related section in particular, so that you don't have to modify the one that you have on your main page. So I'm just going to go ahead and go back real quickly. And I'm going to set this back to two. And then we're going to use a little bit of CSS to be able to change the one that we have inside the actual product page. So I'm going to set this back. And let's go ahead and get started here. All right. Now, to be able to modify the number of thumbnails that we have here per row, the first thing that we need to do, as we have done with previous customizations for blog pages and for portfolio pages, we need to figure out how Squarespace is creating this sort of grid that we have in here to be able to modify it to our needs. So let's go ahead and take a quick peek here. And let's see what we can find. All right, so apparently I landed directly on the grid of these items. So just to orient ourselves a little bit in here, you can see that if I go all the way up here, we have the whole section for this page. And then if we go inside it, we have the regular container section border and content wrapper for pretty much all sections in 7.1. If we open the content wrapper one, we have a regular content container. And then we start having things that are a little bit more specific for product pages. Then if we keep looking through here, we can see a bunch of different containers. And this one here at the bottom, you're going to see that there is a separate section. So let me close this up. You can see that we have a couple of sections in here. So we have this product item nav section, which is pretty much the breadcrumbs that we have up here. Then we have this product summary or product item summary section that is in here. And then we have this product item additional section down here. Now note that things may change a little bit depending on the type of layout that you're working with for the product page. But in general, this is pretty much the layout that you have. And then down here, we have this other section that is actually carrying the related products for the rest of the store. So within this area, we have the H2. And then here we have this container called product item related products. And then within this container, we have this other one called list grid. Now I want us to pay attention to this particular one because you're going to see 
that here on the right side, there's a little label that says grid. And as I have mentioned in previous customizations, whenever you see grid, like the little grid label next to an element means that this is pretty much the element that is in control of how many thumbnails or how many elements show up per row. And if we take a look here on the right side, we can actually see that in action. So there is this property here called grid template columns that is currently set to repeat to min max 01 FR. This is pretty much saying that we're going to repeat something two times. And for this particular case is a min max value of 01 FR. So basically what this value is doing is creating two equally wide columns that can go from zero pixels to one fraction of the space. And so if the space is something like 100%, then it's pretty much going to make the two columns be 50% each. So if we want to alter the number of columns that are created in here, what we need to do is simply modify the number of times that this value gets repeated. So instead of splitting that space into two, we can go ahead and split it into three. If we wanted to, we could split it into four, we could split it into five, and you get the idea. So what we're gonna do here is basically reuse the same selector that Squarespace is using to be able to set our own value. Now, I want to reuse the same media query that Squarespace is using as well, because I want to keep whatever layout it is that Squarespace uses on mobile. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what that is. I'm just going to refresh this real quick to get rid of that for value change that I made there. And then I'm going to take a look here on mobile. I think everything stacks on mobile. Yes, everything stacks on mobile. So I actually want to keep things the way they are here for smaller screens. So like I said, I'm going to reuse the selector plus the same breakpoint that Squarespace is using to create this particular layout. And I'm just going to replace that grid template columns value for the same value that we have in here, except that I'm going to change that too into whichever number I wanna use. So I'm going to grab all of this here like so. I'm going to add it in here. And then I'm going to create my media query in here. So media screen and minimum width of 768 pixels, if I'm not mistaken. I'm going to check that in a second. Like that, minimum width, 768, perfect. And I'm going to grab this whole declaration because I want to use the same property and the same value except for that repeat number. So I'm going to grab that and place it in here. And now I just need to change this little value. So one thing to note about this repeat function, though, is that we're not really going to be able to use it as it is. So you're going to see that if I were to change the number right now, nothing is really going to happen on the screen. And I'm not really going to go into details into why this happens when you're adding this type of code inside the custom CSS window. But just keep in mind that both the repeat function and the calc function need to have some extra symbols in there to be able to escape the value and make sure that the browser translates it correctly. So all we need to do in here is make sure that in between the parentheses that are wrapping our value, we have the little tilde sign and then we have quotes around the rest of the value. And by doing that, like I said, what we're doing is escaping the value. And so the browser is able to translate the code correctly and apply it to our site. Now, another thing that we could do in here, since we're already working with the CSS grid, we're already altering the grid. Another thing that we could modify here is pretty much the gap in between the elements. So if you don't like the current gap that Squarespace is working with, we can go ahead and modify this here. So let's go ahead and set column gap because I want to change the space vertically here, not horizontally, which it doesn't really show at the moment, but I just want to modify it vertically. So let's go ahead and set here the column gap to something small, like five pixels. And you can see how that is just going to make sure that all of the columns have less space in between them. And of course, if you want to make this even bigger, then you can go ahead and use a large number. And that is just going to open up the space in between the related items. So I think I'm actually going to work with 10 pixels here just because I like the look. And now we're going to move on to how we can style the text that we have inside here, the metadata area. So we're going to modify a little bit the font of this text here, the title of our products. And we're also going to modify the price as well. So let's start with the title and see how we can target that. So if we take a look in here, I can see that I landed on an A element that seems to be holding a lot of things. So let's go ahead and look at different containers to see where we are. 
All right, so here is our full grid. And that means that these three elements that we have in here are the different items that we have inside this product area. And then if we open this up, we can see that this container is holding the thumbnail, this container is holding the text, and then this container is an A element that is pretty much covering everything so that it's making everything click through so that if you click on the image or the text, this is going to lead you to the same place. Let's go ahead and take a deeper look into the content area. So I'm going to open this one up and then here we can see that we have grid main meta container and then we have a grid meta status container that apparently is not showing in here. So this one, just in case you're curious, really refers to this little sale sign that sometimes shows up in here, depending on if you have a product on sale. But we're not really going to modify that at the moment. We're going to focus on the title itself. So I'm going to go back to this grid main meta container. So opening this up, we can see that we have grid title and product price. So perfect because these are the two things that we want to modify right now. So starting with the title, I'm going to go ahead and select this one through the class of grid title. However, I don't really like that class on its own because the problem is that this is not really pointing to anything that has to do with the related product item section. So I don't know if this is going to modify anything else if I use this class on its own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine this with a class that does look like it belongs only to the related products item section. And then I'm going to go ahead and change the styles of the font. So looking a little bit higher up, I'm just going to look for, oh, this class looks good. This one is called product item related products. So we can see or infer that this class is only going to show up for those related product item sections. So I'm going to grab this class and use it in my selector combined with the class of the actual thing that I want to modify, which is grid title. So I'm going to grab this here. And now I'm going to be modifying the title within the related products section of product pages. Now let's go ahead and change maybe the font size here. So something like 13 pixels. I think that's a little bit small. So I think I'm going to work with 15 pixels instead. That looks pretty good. And then here, if we wanted to change the font family or if we wanted to change, let's actually change the font family here. So if we were to change here the font family for something different, so like times or something, you can see how that changes there. I actually don't like that, so I'm gonna take it off. Um, and then if we want to modify something like the font weight, we could do that too. That is already bold, so let's go ahead and set this to normal. You can see how the font weight changes there. Again, not really sure I want that. So I think I'm going to keep the font size on its own. And then let's go ahead and modify the price size as well, because now I feel like this is way too close. Like the, the size of both fonts is a little bit too close. So let's go ahead and target the price now. Now, again, just going back to our containers here, we can see that the product has a class of product price. But once again, this class is a little bit too generic for my taste. So I'm going to combine it with this product item related products class as well to make sure that I'm only targeting the product price within these sections. So I'm going to grab the class here. And I'm going to include this other selector, and now I can modify the font size. So I think I'm gonna set this one to 13 pixels, and there we go. And now we have a tiny little price here, and we have a much smaller title for all of the items here on our page. And like I said, if you want to keep modifying things for the different font styles that you have for these two areas, you can go ahead and keep doing it through these two snippets, but I think I'm gonna keep it as it is because I already like the look. And in case you're wondering for 7.0, the process is very similar in terms of how you can change the styles for the title of the different products and the prices for the different products. However, the selectors are a little bit different. So if you're interested in changing this for 7.0, make sure to grab the code that comes from the blog post that corresponds to this video. All right, my friend, and that's everything that I have for you today. I really hope that these little tips help you now customize your related product items section a little bit more in both 7.1 and 7.0. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on content just like this one, and I will see you next time.